This video is brought to you by Squarespace. With the booster course pass doubling the track count, you might think, oh, this is the ultimate Mario Kart. And I've got to say, no. Look, 48 courses, no matter its flaws, is a sweet way to tie us fans over until Mario Kart 10 comes out in like, 2028 or something. But with so much content coming to this game, why stop with just tracks? We all know there's a lot more to Mario Kart than just for courses you race on. It's for carts, the modes, the items, and of course, the characters. For what's allegedly the best Mario Kart ever made, this roster doesn't meet that criteria for me. There are critical characters missing from 8 Deluxe. And if Nintendo isn't gonna fix for roster, well, I guess I'll do it myself. So sit back, grab a snack, and enjoy this semi-believable concept of how Nintendo could make Mario Kart 8 Deluxe the best Mario Kart in the world. Not too dissimilar to how you can create the best website in the world. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to make absolutely anything. You can make your site elegant and effectively with every tool you need in one place. And that place is Squarespace. Forget all the tedious stuff, you can shortcut straight to having a good looking site by browsing the plethora of designer templates and customizing the chosen one to your needs with absolutely no coding required. Guys look, it took me 15 minutes to have a website look this professional. I'm not joking, the tools on display here are generally that efficient to suit whatever you need. Like with videos, you can upload them directly to Squarespace natively and elegantly incorporate them onto your site, or just embed existing video links. It's up to you. So whether you want a storefront to sell something, a portfolio that looks insanely professional, something goofy, whatever your needs are, you can start building it for free by heading on over to squarespace.com. And once you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash get mad, use the code get mad at checkout to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you Squarespace for supporting the channel. Let's start off by addressing the biggest first world problem ever to exist. 8 Deluxe's character layout. So the current roster is made up of 6 rows with little to no consistency in organisation. It feels like a messy desktop. They're not ordered by date, they're not ordered by name, who did this? The first row just has clones chucked on the end, the second row is a club sandwich with a dino garnish, the third row has the lightest and heaviest characters next to each other in the middle of the roster, the fourth row goes no bone bone no bone bone. The fifth row, okay, this is actually su super organized and, and the couplings are in order of weight class, but then the sixth row, oh, oh wait, this is really organized too. Seeing how this is set up, I was half expecting Link to be next to Baby Daisy. Overall, this layout is fine, it works. However, it can definitely be improved. Now, if I was gonna reorganize this roster without adding any new characters, I think I would do something like this. <laughs> Oh, and I also replaced Baby Rosalina. Luna would be a much more interesting and logical character to have in the game. Also, if I kept her, there would have to be six columns to have all the babies in the top row. And trust me when I say that didn't look good. I spent multiple hours trying to figure out the best layout for this. And after spending so much time looking at Mario Kart selection screens, I think a semi Wii inspired layout organized by weight class is the best way to go. I mean, having the lightest characters at the top just makes a lot more logical sense than putting them directly in the middle next to metal variants. And speaking of variants, you may be wondering, wh 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 where are they? What happened to my precious t t Tanuki Mario? Just like Yoshi, Shaga, and Link, Mario, Peach, the Animal Crossing characters, and Inklings have character variants under a subfolder. However, this causes a tiny conundrum. I'm sure most players are well aware that the metal variations of Mario and Peach are a different weight class to their flesh versions. So if that's information known, wouldn't it be a bit weird to have them under a subfolder? Their statistics are entirely different. What's the reasoning? Well, here's my reasoning. Make a heavy metal variant for every character. After you've played a character more than a thousand times, you unlock its metallic alternate costume. Not only is this an easy and cool way to give more variations to the roster, but also doubles and making every playable character a viable heavyweight. No longer is it just everyone picking Waluigi on the Wiggler bike for maximum speed. Now it's time for Cobalt Toads to be number one. Oh, you know, it could still be Waluigi, but 
He's iridescent now. And we don't have to stop at just metals. There's so many cool costumes they could add for different characters. Koopa Paratrooper, Gatsune Luigi, Meowza. I could keep going, but my windpipes are giving out. <laughs> oh, and for these characters, they can be given out through online challenges. Let's say there's weekly special journeys released by Nintendo with really weird, unique rules in rotation. And getting over 120 points during a week's tourney unlocks you a new alternate costume at random. That way you won't miss out on anything if you miss a week and makes the mystery of what you'll get at 120 points even more exciting. Now these alternative characters would be really nice to see, but what about something more thematical? Just a standard racing uniform like what the Miis have is a good base to start with. Keyword being base, because this isn't just any costume. This is a costume you can customize. To an extent. Of all it would be amazing to be able to make your own fully custom designs like the Mario Kart DS Emblem Maker or clothing in the Able Sisters, I just don't think Nintendo would bring that back for modern Mario Kart. However, even with a limited amount of customization, the limitation could be done in a very cool and thematic way. You know those brands you see across the maps in Mario Kart 8? What if you could unlock those logos as patches and put them on your racing suit? Maybe by reaching certain achievements, you can unlock more patches. This could be a really fun way of rewarding skill with customization. 8 Deluxe and frankly all modern Nintendo games are way too easy to unlock everything. And although I no longer have to worry about trying to get me Outfit B, I would be lying if I said I didn't miss having something to work towards. But I think these three reward systems could be the answer. Reaching achievements unlocks stickers to put on your racing suit, playing weekly special tourneys unlocks alternate costumes, and mastering a character unlocks its metallic variant. So now with our ground covered, it's time for the main event. The Booster Racer Pass. I couldn't think of a better name. 20 new characters characters across five waves. Alrighty, we're starting off with the first wave, the Team Mario Pack. Character one, Birdo. Whenever I tell people I'd like to see Birdo in the game, they say, wait, Birdo's not in Mario Kart 8? And I agree, where is Birdo? Get Birdo in the bloody game right now. Character two, Diddy Kong. Same goes for Diddy. Why are neither of these characters in the game already? They are iconic and having this roster without them just doesn't feel right. And on Double Dash and Wii, Diddy Kong was my main, so it, I want him to return, please. Character three, Pauline. With her spike in popularity since Odyssey, it's really cool to see this character, which I was introduced in Mario vs. Donkey Kong Mini's March again, start appearing in the spotlight. So bring her to her mainline Mario Kart already. Character four, Pikmin. Now what Pikmin rep it would be, I can't really decide. The obvious one is Olimar because his name is a literal anagram for Mario, but I think there's a lot more interesting options. It could be a blue Pikmin, it could be a rock Pikmin, it could be a bowl ball. I just think out of all the guest franchises I'd like to see in Mario Kart, Pikmin is at the very top. And now that the Team Mario pack is complete, let's move on to wave two, the Team Bowser pack. Character five, Kamek. Any Mario Kart enthusiast would know that Kamek was actually cut from the Mario 64 roster, so to go full circle and bring them into the ultimate Mario Kart would be fantastic. Character 6, Monty Mole. Alright guys, gotta be honest, Monty Mole is the best Mario enemy. Put him in the game! Character 7, Hammer Bro. Similar to Kamek, I think Hammer Bro was another cut character, but this time from Mario Kart Wii. And for the same reasoning, I think he also deserves a spot. Character 8, Charge and Chuck. Guys, it's bloody Chuck. What are you expecting? Of course he's going to be in this game. Moving on to the third wave, we have the Wild Pack. Character 9, Funky Kong. Bring this beautiful, handsome fellow back into the spotlight, please. He had one appearance in Mario Kart Wii, and he deserved more. It's not the same to have a Mario Kart game without him. Character 10, Wiggler. Wiggler made an appearance in Mario Kart 7 and then just disappeared the next game. Why would you bring Lakitu over from 7, but then leave Wiggler out? Character 11, Penguin. Okay, this is definitely my guilty pleasure pick, but at the same time, why wouldn't you want Penguin to be a playable character? It would be so cool. I hate that sentence so much. Character 12, Poochie. Even though he lacks a nose, wait, what? If you can play as a cat, it's only fair you can play as a pooch. I'm confident that adding Yoshi's dog as a playable character would be the opposite of a sight for sore eyes. Unless you're uncomfortable by his lack of nose. Now we're on to wave four, 
the Royal Pack. Character 13, Petey Piranha. Petey Piranha is objectively the coolest Mario character ever made. And similar to Pauline representing Mario Odyssey, it would be really cool to have a character pay homage to Mario Sunshine the same way. And let's continue this trend with character 14, Honey Queen. Oh, that rhymed. Making her first and only appearance in Mario Kart 7, Honey Queen could be our rep for Mario Galaxy. Character 15, King bob -omb. We can't have all this 3D Mario representation without the king who started it all back in 1996. Character 16, King Goomba. Ugh, King Goomba, I hear you say. Well, let me say something back. Almost every roster prediction I see always has Mario RPG characters in it for some reason. Oh, I'd love to see Fawful in the game. Oh, I'd love to see Count Black. But guys, those characters haven't made any appearance outside of their series. They're not gonna pop up for a race. I'm an optimist, but I'm also a realist. But King Goomba, on the other hand, has appeared in multiple Mario games, including Mario Kart DS as a boss battle. This would make a really out of left field character, but at the same time, it would be a logical out of left field character. Also, he would be a rep for Mario 64 DS. So please welcome him with open arms. <laughs> And now, it's time to conclude with the final wave. Wave 5, the Frantic Pack. Character 17, Rob the Robot. I'm surprised by how many people don't remember this, but Rob was actually playable back in Mario Kart DS. I'm pretty sure that was actually my first introduction to the character before Brawl. And since we've pretty much gone down the line adding characters which were in previous Mario Kart titles, except for maybe Donkey Kong Jr., it just makes sense to add Rob back. Character 18, Plessy. Representing 3D World, let this goofy little guy into the game. Character 19, Professor Egad. Come on guys, I know he's from Luigi's Mansion, but Egad is so goofy and funny and his trick animations would be incredible. And the final addition to this roster, let me introduce to you Character 20, Spike. Nope, nope, not the green guy, this guy. This man from Wrecking Crew. Listen, Spike's gonna be in the Mario movie. And if we look at Pauline as a case study of a character being reintroduced to the franchise and becoming a mainstay, I truly think Spike being in the Mario movie is gonna have the same implications for his character. So put him in the game. <laughs> It's kind of nice to be excited about Mario Kart again. However, at the same time, it's hard not to think that there could be more done with this franchise at the moment. But who knows, you know, we might get all of this stuff eventually in the next Mario Kart game. B, what do you mean we have one character slot unfilled? Oh shit, you're right. Um. Oh, as a bonus character for having all the DLC, Thwomp. <laughs> Thank you to all my patrons, and specifically Bapati and Ultimate145 for supporting the channel. Genuinely, all the patrons really helped out with this video. We had a lot of assets to make. And if you're still in a Mario Kart route, <laughs> route? And if you're still in a Mario Kart mood and feel like racing me, I'm going to be streaming Mario Kart on my streaming channel later today. But if you're watching this video in the future, don't worry, all right? We do Mario Kart tournaments every week in my Discord server, so hopefully I can race you then instead. Apart from that, thanks for watching to the end. Check out the Patreon. There's exclusive content on there uh, check out the streams join the discord there's lots of fun stuff to do and but most importantly make sure you have a very nice rest of your day